Hey, what's up? It's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes to talk about some of the awesome features on your brand new Heartland Bighorn Traveler fifth wheel? Congratulations on snagging your brand new Heartland Bighorn Traveler. Let's talk a little bit about some of the features. Right up front, I want to start right here with the Rotaflex fifth wheel hitch, the pin box, if you will. You got the pivoting head here with some control in it. What that does is that just helps stop that chucking and bucking while going down the road. Now you will notice with your Bighorn Travelers, you will have what's known as store more storage. What they've done is they've dropped the generator box down to the bottom right there, like you see right there. And they've given you three access points on most of the fifth wheels uh, and on this one for accessing your pass-through storage, which is heated, it's closed off, it's finished. And you might even get something as cool as this Moride Easy Reel cord roller right there, which does have power and it also has a lock on it too. So a uh, nice little feature to keep things neat and tidy. Over here in our battery box, you will see you got your battery right there. This one does come with the Magnum Dimensions uh, Pure Sine Wave Inverter. What that does, that just helps with your residential fridge that you have inside. If you do get a generator, here's your inverter for that, AKA the switch. And since we do have the hydraulic lift system on this one, right here is our hydraulic holder. And you'll notice it has the fill line. A lot of times when the slides are out and the jacks are down, uh, that fluid level is going to be really low. If you truly want to check the fluid level, make sure to pull everything in, pull the jacks all the way up, and that'll give you a good indication. Aqua shed going around your storage doors on this. What that does, that just kind of helps keep the rain and the moisture out. You do have uh, a 10 amp quick connect for your solar panels. You're going to plug that in so you can trickle charge your battery right there. And this one does come with auto level. Now, right here, you have two panels to access the auto level. Right here is your outside panel. If you come out and this red light right here is on or blinking, what you're going to have to do is come around to the outside command panel, which is right here. And this is where you can reset it. This is your external command panel located inside your pass-through storage with the rotocast down here. Some models may have that. I like this because you can put the wet stuff there. You also have strut supporting on all your storage doors going all the way around, anti-slam latches, and covered hinges. Now, on your propane tanks, you'll have two 30-pound LP tanks, one on the left, one on the right. And you'll notice that you have your selector switch right here. Left means the left tank. Middle means you're pulling from both tanks. And right means you're pulling from the right tank. This little indicator right here, if it's green, that means that you have propane. But you got to check, make sure that it's open and you are connected. As you can see, you know, we're not connected here right now. But if that's green, you got propane. If not, you don't have propane. You'll also see the slides. You'll have different types of slides. You'll have the rack and pinion. You might have the worm groove. But regardless, what you want to do, if you can, get you some of that slide protectant uh, and conditioner that we sell at Camping Warden Gander. Put that on about every 90 days so that, you know, your slides stay nice. They don't crack. They don't dry and then chip all over you. Other side of our LP tank right here. You'll see that right there. Underneath, you do have the Lippert LCI Level Up Hydraulic Leveling System on this one. Now it is hydraulic, but it does need electric to run. So uh, you wanna make sure that you have good power. At least 10.8 uh, is what one of my tech buddies was saying, but that's a big pull on the battery. Try to get uh, you know at least 11 uh, or be plugged into shore power or your truck to get those up. You got a heated and enclosed underbelly under there as well. You got sealed tinted safety windows all the way around. You're either going to have the Solera, the Dometic, or the Carefree awning. With this one, you do have the adjustable pitch. As you can see, all you got to do to adjust it is pull it down. But I'm six foot two, and, and my two inch vertical really doesn't do much to help me reach up there. Uh, but if you do need to manually roll this awning out, especially if it's the Lippert, you'll notice that there's a little rubber nozzle right there at the end of the awning. See the little circle? You pop that out, 7 16th drive, that'll get your awning out for you. You do have the step above solid steps on these two, so when you're putting them away or pulling them out of the coach, just make sure that the door is all the way open. They are strut supported, so grab the handle, just be careful, they'll go up. There's no locking mechanism because they are strut supported. Just be careful when pulling them down. And you'll notice we have the little release levers right here. That's how you get the legs to touch the ground. Just when you 
get it on the ground, make sure it's sturdy, make sure it's stable, and make sure this, the, the top plate, isn't so high that you can't close the door. Now you got these awesome Dexter Easy Lube axles. You got a 15 inch aluminum rims, nitro filled tires with the CRE 3000 suspension on there, which really helps give you some additional safety and security. But with those Dexter Easy Lube axles, about every thousand miles, that's when you wanna put like one or two, no more than two pumps of grease inside of there. And make sure you get the right grease. Talk to your specialist about which one's gonna be right for your RV. Spare tire is mounted underneath. Plus, if you do have the LP Quick Connect, you see right there, you just plug that right in to the receiver of your grill and you are good to go. Just make sure that you got propane and that the propane is turned on. Solid ladder mounted on this one over the top so you can get up here and check out the roof. You got backup camera, you got rain nozzles. You do have a two inch hitch right here, 3,000 pounds on that one. You got your 50 amp service right here. Just make sure when you're plugged in that this is screwed in and that you're getting juice. Also want to check and make sure at the junction box that the breakers are on. Another good tip too, if you can get a surge protector, just always helps because depending on where you're at, if they're pulling off the same grid and you got a lot of campers camping, it just, just trust me on that one. All right, sewer outlet connections right there. You'll also see our low point drains over here. You'll see the handles for the waste tanks. You got one here and you got one there. If you're gonna be draining the tanks, drain the black first and then drain the gray, but you don't have to keep them open if you're set up at the campsite. It's good to kind of have some, some water in those tanks, especially the black tank, because without it, you might get that pyramiding effect and uh, that could, you know, just give you a false reading on your sensor. Plus it's, you know, a little bit harder to clean out. Uh, if you are filling your fresh tank, like right here at the external command center, I, I like this because you have the multi options. You got the city fixture, which is, you know, city connection, fresh tank fill, like you have over here. You hear the vent probably popping out, dry camping or winterization down there. Uh, if you are filling up from a uh, well water, just be careful. Uh, every now and then just clean it out with some white vinegar because that sulfur will deposit on the bottom of the tank and cause it to have bad smell. And if you're gonna flush out your black tank, like we have right here, make sure A, that you're connected for the water to go somewhere, the water and the waste to go somewhere, and that the black tank is open. You do not want that closed when flushing your black tank. You got your cable connections right here for your TV, your entertainment, your satellite, a GFCI outlet. You got the cable connection right there as well, a little port for all your connections, a sprayer nozzle, and this has a 12 gallon DSI hot water heater bypass. And there's you know your valve controls for that to cut it off and on. Um, you got the direct spark on that, just like we have on the back of our hot water heater. So you do the little pull tab, lift that up, and right here, you'll see on the back of our suburban water heater, you have the little electric switch, which isn't here. Okay, good, so that means it's on the inside. Get your anode rod, your LP igniter, your pressure release valve, and your reset. Uh, one thing, especially if your uh, unit has been in storage, get some pipe cleaners, just carry them with you, keep them in the kitchen. Clean out this tube right here because propane has mercaptan in it, and that smells really good to critters, bugs, bees, dirt daubers. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, you don't want that backsplash. You don't want that backfiring coming up. So you can easily clean that out with a pipe cleaner. Uh, also, if you're taking a look and you see a bunch of debris up the top of your hot water heater, that means it's got junk in there. You got to clean it out. Just, you know, get it serviced. And if you need to reset it, you just push the reset buttons right there. Uh, this is the back of our Suburban 35K BTU furnace. Just try not to block these vents right here because it is hot air coming out of there and that could set something like a chair or something like that on fire. Beautiful coach, well-built, redesigned for 21, lots of features. Uh, just nice. And what do you say we go take a look on the inside, Bobby? So when you walk into your RV, probably the first thing you want to look for is your control panel. If you do not see it on the wall or anywhere, chances are it's inside one of the cabinets. So 
open up the cabinet, and here it is for hours right here. Now, this is where you can control everything from your water heater to your lights to running out your slides to the awning. You know, you got all your controls right here, as well as checking, you know, the status of some of your tanks. Your battery. Now, if you notice that, you know, a lot of things aren't running, uh, the slides aren't going out, uh, check your battery. If you're hooked up to shore power, it should be full. If you're running off of your coach batteries, two thirds is probably the least amount of juice that you want to be able to run the slides out. 11.8 is really that kind of sweet spot for running the slides out. Uh, so just, you know, make, you know, be sure of that. If you are going to be running uh, batteries and you need to power this refrigerator, this is your remote switch. You just push it to cut it on, hold it on, it'll beep, and then it's on. But obviously we're on shore power, so it's going to cut off. Now, with your gray tanks, if you clean them out and you know they're done, but you come and hit them and they're still showing like two thirds or full, but you wait, it's like, wait a minute, no, I dumped them, I know they're clean. They have sensors on the tanks that can sometimes get continuity between them because of moisture. Just wait 15 minutes or so, let the moisture drip down the side of the tank. That should break the connection between the sensors. You go back and check it and it should read empty. If not, make sure that they actually are empty, flush them out or bring it in for service. Let us take a look at it. Uh, now we're here, you do have a water heater. Um, this DSI fault, the direct spark ignition. So if we cut it on, this light will come on to cut it on, especially if we do the 120 volt. Uh, what that's doing is that's trying to light the water heater. If you have propane, this light will come on and then it'll go off. Uh, it may come back on to show you that, you know, that you've reached temperature, it may not. This may go off and come back on because we don't have propane in the tanks, nor do we have them open. Slide controls all right there. You will find solid surface countertops inside your Harland Bighorn Traveler. Just watch out because hard knocks and stuff like that can chip these. Uh, but you'll also get these NFC plates that allow you to do some wireless charging. You'll have usually one in the kitchen and one in the master. Now you're gonna have either the Hayer, the Insignia or the LG fridge inside your Heartland Traveler. These are residential style fridges. For example, this one is the Hayer. You'll see this one has the two drawers, the ice chest, and the freezer, as I like to call it, the freezer bucket. You got the cool zones. You'll see the little dial controls back here for how to control them. You know, what am I, am I cooling vegetables, or sodas, or am I cooling just some straight up ribeyes? You can control that right there. Uh, the one thing too, if you're uh, driving down the road, oh, and right here are your controls. So if you want to set the temperatures, it's a touch screen. You just pick the zone, check the temperature that you want, and then you can push and hold. We got the little cover plate on it, so it's not really reacting to my fingers, but this little touch plate, easy to use. Uh, just one thing, if you are driving down the road uh, and this is running, if your battery doesn't have a charge light on your truck, uh, try to get one because these will yank, will drain a battery. And if you're dry docking, if stuff's already cooled down, you might get six hours, um, maybe less. If not, it, you got less than that because it's going to run a lot and drain a lot to try to cool everything down. Now, with the cooktops and the ovens, you're either going to get the Suburban, the Furion, uh, or the Insignia stovetop and oven. But for these, like the Suburban, it's recessed. It's got the glass cover. You'll see you got the grill style grate right here. And to ignite it, it also has the LED lights. You cut on whichever burner you want to light, and then you just turn the spark. What that does is that causes the igniter to fire. If you don't see any fire coming from there, uh, just check it. You can also remove this top panel. There's a little connector for the ignite for the igniters that sometimes come disconnected. Just check for that. Also make sure that you got propane running, that you actually have propane in the lines and it's coming through because it, it does take time for that propane to feed through the line. And for your oven, same thing. You got the pilot right here and just turn. And then you can cut it on and cut your temperatures but just always make sure that when you're done, these are off. And when you're igniting, only turn one way. There's an arrow because you can't go backwards. You wanna make sure you're turning the right way. You're also gonna have either the High Point, uh, the LG or the Insignia uh, convection oven, like we see right here. Easy to use, large, they work great, microwave and convection. 
When it comes to your countertops, you will have solid surface countertops in here, undermounted stainless steel farmhouse style sinks with these black matte black high rise faucets and sprayers. Uh, for hot and cold, you'll see hot is that way, cold is that way, and to open it, you just push it forward. That's uh, how you kind of, you know, pretty simple controls on that. For your entertainment, you will get a large TV. Some of them, or most of them, should be on the swivel arm. And you'll see, oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. Come over here on this side so you can see the connections. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can get back there. Oh, no, the countertop's keeping me. But you'll see you got all your connections back there, your power, all of a sudden, the other thing, depending on what you want to run as far as entertainment. And some of the, the, the panels, um, they will know, you know, which communication's coming in, whether it's cable or whether it's satellite. You'll also get uh, the electric fireplace, and these are great because they have a blower on them, roughly 5,000 BTUs of heat, multiple light settings, multiple dimmers and temperature settings, and flame settings. And let me tell you, we just cut it on <laughs> just now, and that thing kind of kicked out some heat, didn't it, Bobby? <laughs> that thing works really well. does a good job of knocking the chill off the air, but it is electric will run on shore power. If you're plugged in and this isn't running, bring it in, let our service folks check it out. You can also check the fuse box or the circuit breaker, which we'll, we'll, we'll find that when we get to it, Bobby, sorry. Um, the fuse panel is really interesting because if there's a red light on the fuse, that means the fuse is bad, it can be replaced. If you replace it and things still aren't working, whether it's a fireplace, a TV, the air conditioner, bring it in, let our service folks handle it for you. Now, you, in some of these, you will have recliners, which have storage in the middle. Some of them will have storage on the end. They may have massage, they may have heat, they may have USB charging. They're awesome. This one just happens to be a sleeper sofa, which you remove the cushions. Just be careful, pull it out. You see that you have the legs right there fold these out. This back piece just folds down to complete the bed. And there you go. Now you're either going to have the GE or the Dometic uh, air conditioner on this. It could be a, a 15.5 and a 13.5 or excuse me, it could be a 15K and a 13.5. It could be two 15s. It could be one 15. Um, just depends on the make and model, which one you get. But Regardless, each one of them will have the quick cool dump. And I gotta tell you, because it's a full profile fifth wheel, this is tough to reach. But as you can see, that quick cool dump does a good job of just dumping the air. When you close it, it comes through the ducts. You see your filter right there, which has the pull stoppers on it. Pull that down, clean it out or exchange it. That's how you change the filter. And we'll get to the controls here in just a minute. But once again, if you plugged up the power, you cut the AC on, the control panel has power, it's lit up and you're able to use it. If you're still not getting AC, check to make sure you're plugged in, check the batteries, the disconnect's not off or on, and make sure that those fuses aren't blown. If you're still not getting AC or heat, bring it in, we'll fix it for you. You're gonna have freestanding dinettes in some of the Harlan Bighorn Travelers. For example, this one is the one that has that rustic feel, it's beautiful. It has the extendable leaf right here, which when you pull it up, these little legs lock into place. And to release them, you just pull it down and push it down. This is obviously set up for delivery, so we're not gonna go through all of that. Just be careful because I will let you know if you try to grab it right here from the bend point, that's the quickest way to get your fingers pinched. Not a good day in the neighborhood. LP and O2 detectors right here. This is our fuse box as well as our breakers. They, if something's wrong, this will be lit up with a red LED light. You know, sometimes the 50's off, you know, the main, the AC, whatever, the GFCI outlets. Just check it. Um, you know, don't do anything that's going to put yourself in harm's way, but, you know, just check it. Coming to the shower, you will have a porcelain bowl that's high rise with the foot flush. And you'll see right here, the foot flush is over here on the right side. That just kind of lets the water in as well as releases the flapper valve. If you notice that you know, you're know you pushing this down but the water's still draining and the flapper's not coming all the way in, you can just get some Vaseline and a glove, rub it around that black seal on the bottom and that'll help. You will have a 
walk-in single surround shower with a glass enclosure, corner notches, and bench seats with skylight, good headroom, and your little shower nozzle right here with the off and on switch. Just push that in, push it the other way to cut it off and on. Your controls right there. Your sinks work the same. All right, and then last but not least, we come into the master bedroom. Now, somewhere inside the master bedroom, you should have a charging plate like this one. Now, this one has uh, a 13.5 AC in the master bedroom and a 15K in the living area with separate controls. But this is what your GE controls look like. This is your mode. You just cycle through if you want cool, you want the furnace, you want it off, or you want the fan. Um, Let's cut that up a little bit. And if it's if it's more than 80 degrees outside, and there you can see, this has got the quick cool dump open. Um, there you can kind of see what it sounds like when it's running, how loud it is. If it's really hot outside, these walls are not very thick. So if it's really hot outside, it's over 85, 90 degrees. You want to get this thing down to you know roughly 70 or 65. Just be careful, put the fan on high, not auto, because if you leave it on auto, the cutting off and on can freeze these up. So just watch out for that. But really easy to control, really easy to set up. You got dual USB charging around. You do have washer dryer prep in these as well. And you'll see you have two 110 outlets down on the bottom. And that just kind of helps keep everything rocking and rolling. Um, tons of features, tons of amenities. TVs in the bedroom with your cable and your satellite connection and your 110 power right there. Sometimes you'll see the little power button with the little green light. Just make sure that that's lit up so that you're getting juice to it. Uh, just enjoy your RV. Enjoy your Bighorn Traveler because it's a great RV for you and the family with a ton of features. Hopefully this video has helped you with troubleshooting and using your Heartland Traveler. Uh, but please, we have service folks standing by. You can always call and ask questions. And if you have the Good Sam Elite membership, you have access to the tech hotline. Just be smart, have fun, and enjoy your camping.